Hello everyone, welcome to another informational video of ServiceNow where we will be discussing about G underscore user object, how it is used, where it is used and we will look at properties and methods of this object using scripting and in the end we will be looking at a scripting example as well. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel to learn in depth about ServiceNow. These are the table of contents which we will be going through this video. If you want to jump to some specific topic, the links would be given in the description. First of all, the introduction. The Glide user API provides properties and methods for finding information about current logged in user and their roles. In other words, this API will provide the information about current user, what are its roles through the use of some methods or properties. Next, Glide user methods and properties are accessed through G underscore user object. So you have to access these properties or methods using G underscore user object. And most important thing to note is it is available only on client side scripting. Next is G underscore user properties. So these are the properties which are available out of the box by service now. The first is username which is used to provide the login name of the user. So the login name which you use to login into service now for example for system administrator you would be using admin. So that's the username which it would return. The first name and the last name would return the first name and last name respectively of that user. And finally the user ID would return the sys ID of that user. If you are a developer in ServiceNow, you would know the importance of SysID. And now we will quickly jump into ServiceNow and look at all of these properties. I am currently logged into ServiceNow. I will go to client scripts. And you would see I have already written a client script called G underscore user properties demo. If you don't know anything about client scripts or if you want to learn in depth about client scripts, the link is on the top right corner where I have a playlist for learning client scripts. So this client script is created on the incident table and it's of type on load. So that means it will run on the incident form every time it is loaded. If I scroll down, you would see I have given the G underscore form add info message. So a message would be displayed at the top of the form where we will see the display name. This is the static message which would be shown and then I have used G underscore user dot username. So this is the property which I have used and this is the object which is present out of the box. So we will be presented with the login name of this user which I am logged in. So I am logged in through the system administrator as of now. So it will show me admin and then it will show me the first name and the last name of the user. So that would be system and the last name would be administrator. And finally G underscore user dot user ID. This would give me back the sys ID of that user. One interesting thing if you would know when you click on dot here it will show you the list of all properties and methods which are available in this object. So if I type user ID it will give me the user ID here. I will now quickly open the incident form to test this functionality. So I will open incident dot list in a new tab and I will open one random incident. So I should see all the messages up here. So at the first you would see the admin which is the login name. The first name is system. The last name is administrator and I see the sys ID of this user which is the system administrator. So just to confirm all these values I will take you to the user record of the system administrator. So for that I will open the sys underscore user dot list table and I will go to system administrators record. So I will search for system administrator. And here you would see the login name is admin. I will click on this and the first name is system. The last name is administrator. And if I try to copy the sys ID of this user, the sys ID is now copied. I will paste it into the notepad. So in the notepad, I will paste this and you would see it is same. It starts with 68 and ends with 41. And that is what we see here. It starts with 68 and ends with 41. So I hope now you are clear on the properties which are available out of the box in G underscore user object. Next we would go to G underscore user methods. So here we have these five methods. The first one is the get full name. So it will give me the full name of that 
user which is currently logged in. So for this, I will again go to my ServiceNow instance and we will quickly test this. First of all, I will go ahead and deactivate this client script for the properties so that it doesn't create any confusion. And then I will go to the client script menu again. And here I have created another client script called g underscore user methods. And in here, I will activate this script and I will comment out the entire code below the full name so that we can test all the methods one by one. So I will save this. I will go back to my incident here and I will refresh this screen. Now it should show me the full name of the system administrator. So here you can see the full name of system administrator is shown. So this works similarly. You have to type g underscore user dot and then the method name comes up here and then you have to add to parentheses. I'll just quickly show you this g underscore user dot get full name and add these parentheses. Next is has role. So has role is used for conditional checks. So if you want to check if the particular logged in user has this specific user role, then you can use this method. It returns true or false. So for example, if this user has this particular role, it will return true else it will return false. So let's quickly see this as well. I'll now remove the comment from the second line and I will add this comment here. And if you see, I have added the info message here has role ITIL and g underscore user dot has role and in the parameters I have passed ITIL. So now I am currently logged in with system administrator which has the role of admin. If we go again to the user record of admin. So this is the list of all the roles which are assigned to system administrator. But one thing you would notice here if I search for ITIL, I wouldn't see that role. It is not explicitly assigned to this particular user. So admin role itself has a contained role of ITIL. So it is not exclusively given to this user or it is not exclusively given to any admin because it is by default given to them. So when I run this method for this current logged in user, which is the admin user, it should return me true. I will comment out the line number three just to avoid confusion. I will save this script. I will go to the incident record and you would see it will return me true here for the admin record. So here you see has role ITIL and it has returned me true for this admin. So this is the second method has role where you want to identify if the user has that particular role or it has any role which contains that role. Next is has role exactly. So as the name says, if you want to verify that particular user has this role explicitly assigned to it. So in the previous example, ITIL wasn't explicitly assigned to that system admin user, but it was by default granted or inherited in some way. Now, if you want to check if the current logged in user was explicitly assigned this particular role, which we will pass in the parameters, then you need to use this particular function has role exactly. So ServiceNow has provided this functionality as well to avoid confusion between has role and has role exactly. So we will quickly see this as well. I will go back to my client script here. I will comment out this again and uncomment has role exactly statement. And here if you would see, I'm checking G underscore user has role exactly and ITIL. I'm again checking the same role which was checked in the previous statement. But now we had checked in the system administrator record that it doesn't have ITIL role explicitly assigned to it. So it should return me false. So I will save this client script. I will go on to the incident record. I will refresh this. And here you would see it has returned me false. After this, the fourth one is has role from list. And as the name says, we will be passing list of roles in the parameters. And if the user has one of these roles, it will return me true. And if the user doesn't have that role in the list which was provided, it will return me false. So we will quickly test this as well. I'll go back to my client script. I will comment out this. And now if you see here, in the list, I have provided the ITIL again. I have only added one role here just to avoid the confusion, but you can pass multiple parameters as I have mentioned here. So you can pass as many parameters as you want. 
and you want to check it from the list. So here again referring back to the has role thing. It will again check for the contained rules as well and it will return me true. So it doesn't matter it was explicitly assigned or not. If the user has a role which is contained in that role as well, it will return me true in that case. I will go ahead and save this. I will go to the incident record. I will refresh this. And you would see has role list from admin and it has returned me true. If you go back to my method here, you would see it was it was checking for the ITIL role and the last method is has roles which is kind of all similar. I had tested out this multiple times and I spent almost an hour finding the difference between has role from list and has roles and it doesn't have any difference. I tested multiple scenarios. So if you would see here, I have tested has roles here. I'll just remove this comment and I'll put it here. And you would see again, I'm checking this G underscore user dot has roles and I'm passing ITL again and it returns me true and it also accepts multiple parameters. So there is no much difference between has roles from list and has roles. So both of these return me true in either case. So I will just save this client script and I will go back here and I will refresh this and you would see it has returned me true in both cases. So the last two methods are basically doing the same thing. Just to reiterate G underscore user methods. The first one was has role. It will return me true if the current user role has been specified and it works for contained role as well. So if admin role contains ITIL, it will return true even though the ITIL wasn't explicitly assigned to that user. Next is has role exactly returns true if the current user was assigned the specified role explicitly. So ITL should have been explicitly assigned to that admin user. Next is has role from list and has role. So these two are kind of similar which we had seen. So it will return me true if the current user has one of the roles specified in the list else false. So you would see the explanation is same for both the functions. If you have any doubts, please let me know in comments regarding these methods. Next, we will see the common use cases. What are the common use cases where we use G underscore user object or these functions or methods. We can show or hide specific fields on a form based on the roles. So for example, if you want to show a field only to admin type of user and not to non admins, you can use this condition and make the field visible or invisible. Next is security. So validating user permissions or enforcing security checks in client side scripts to ensure that Users only have access to the functionality they are authorized to use. And the final is approvals or notifications. So you can send approvals based on the roles of the user or maybe the notifications or fire of the events based on type of users. So for example, if you want to send an email only to particular kind of user, maybe only to the ITL user or maybe to non ITL users. So you can use G underscore user object and its methods. We will be finally going through an example where I will try to show or hide reassignment count field if the user has been assigned ITIL role explicitly. So if you note down here explicitly, so we will be showing the reassignment count field only to the users who have ITIL role explicitly. So admin didn't had that. So we will quickly check this. I'll go back to my G underscore methods demo client script. I will deactivate everything now. And I will have only these la last two lines of script. I'll just zoom in a bit. And here I have put a condition if G underscore user has role exactly ITIL. So it will show me the reassignment count as true. And then the next condition would be else. And I will just copy this and I would say false. So if the user exactly has ITIL role, Show me the reassignment count field which is out of the box field. Otherwise don't show me. So I will save this. So I'm currently logged in with the admin user. I don't have the ITL role exactly. So I will go here. I will refresh this. And you would see the reassignment count field disappeared. So now to test this in another way, I would go into the main page. And I will impersonate as one of the other users called ITL user. I will impersonate. I will go back to the incident record. I will refresh this. 
and you would see the reassignment count is available to this ITIL user. So this is how you can use the underscore user object to add conditions on your client script. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any comments or any suggestions or any feedback, please let me know in the comments or drop me an email. I would love to answer all of them. And please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that like button.